Welcome guys! So, as announced earlier, I want to start a discussion series of videos and to kick it off, I chose a topic that has been quite popular during the last weeks, which is the Grim Patron Warrior. Is Grim Patron Warrior overpowered? Should it be nerfed? Why isn't Blizzard doing anything? Um, if it should be nerfed, how should it be nerfed? Um, all these things have been discussed recently, like, a lot in the community, and, um, I want to talk about this topic a little bit, put things into perspective, um, etc. So, a thing that have, has often been quoted is uh, the Leroy nerf. So, Leroy Jenkins used to be 4 mana, then uh, Blizzard nerfed it to cost 5 mana, and um, they also gave the reasoning behind that and stated Leroy Jenkins created a strategy that revolved about around trying to defeat your opponent in one turn without requiring any cards on the board. We like having a variety of deck types, but taking 20 plus damage in one turn is not very fun or interactive. So, especially the last part, as you can imagine, is often um, cited um, for the discussion's sake. And it's like, has the design pattern changed? Why didn't Blizzard do anything already? Why? Aren't they saying that they plan on doing something? Because it's all obviously like the same thing, right? You, If you lose against Grim Patron War, you usually lose or you often lose in one turn with a big combo without any board. So um, this is often quoted and uh, often used as like the argument in the whole discussion. But of course, um, the combo that has been popular to the time of uh, Miracle Rogue being popular was Leroy Jenkins plus double Shadow Stab. So Leroy used to cost four mana. You played him, you Shadow Stabbed him for two mana. You you Shadow Stabbed him, you played him for two mana. Dealt 18 damage. You could also play like Cold Blood, maybe double Cold Blood, maybe Prep Abyss, things like that for um, dealing 18 plus a little bit more damage. But of course, like, this was the reason given in the patch notes, but it wasn't, like, the only reason. Obviously, because you had cards in the in the game that already did, like, the empty board, charge, 18 damage, 3 cards thing. Like, for example, Alakir and Double Rockbiter. It's basically the same, right? You have 3 cards uh, that deal 18 damage to your opponent, and um, if you discount cards or, like, Shaman is also quite able to do like 12 damage before this. So um, the situation that a combo exists that deals a lot of damage on an empty board from hand is not really something that um, already is, is reason enough for a nerf, right? So you have to see it in context. Um, so the context in this case, of course, was that Miracle Rogue was both very popular um, and very present, which, of course, um, influences each other. So, um, Miracle Rogue had a really, really high win rate. So, whenever someone climbed um, the first place on the ladder, like Legend Ladder, top one, it usually was Miracle Rogue, or maybe a counter to Miracle Rogue. Miracle Rogues were around on the ladder a lot, and uh, if you wanted to climb the ladder, it wasn't... Um, that unlikely that you faced like 50% of Miracle Rogues. So um, it was very present due to its very high win rate overall. Um, because people pl claim Grim Patron Warrior not being around a lot because it's very skill, um, it, it needs a lot of skill and a lot of planning and it's a combo deck and it's hard to play. Right, but so was Miracle Rogue in the days. But it was still around by a big, big margin, simply because it had such a high win, win rate and people learned how to play it. I mean, well, Grim Patron Warrior has been around for quite some time now since Black Rock Mountain, since the deck got refined, so people know how to play it. Many, many streamers played it, um, and so was like the situation with Miracle Rogues. There were, of course, better and worse players, but overall the deck was so strong that um, Blizzard felt the incentive to nerf both um, the combo and like the deck by itself. So if you look at um, the Grim Patron Warrior situation, 
Um, as an example, I'll take my matchups from my priest run. So from rank 4 to legend, I met two, or I was matched up with two Grim Patron Warriors. The rest was like Secret Paladins and Zoo and Druids and more Paladins and even more Paladins <laughs> and some more Druids and a Hunter and Handlocks and such. But overall, there were like just two Grim Patron Warriors. So the deck doesn't seem to be that powerful that you see them a lot, a lot, a lot on the ladder. And if we say, okay, well, people don't like playing combo decks, it's hard to play, um, it, it gets boring, uh, we can make up a lot of stuff um, to justify things like that. So if we have a look at tournaments, for example, this is a list that um, Monk from Team Liquid accumulated over the whole like Blackrock Mountain tournament meta. And if we see the archetypes sorted by win rate, which means they are played by pros, um, we see that, oh, the first few decks aren't even warriors. And then we see Patron Warrior, which is like the best deck with a negative win rate. <laughs> so if you queue up with Patron Warrior, you will most likely lose the game. Like, no, that's not. But it's basically a coin flip, right? So it hasn't even been z that strong of a deck. Even though we talk about like it being the top deck for a very high amount of time now. Of course, people are um, expecting Patron Warrior. They tender their um, lineups around that. So all of this is true. But um, it's not that overpowered that people always bring it and always win with it. Because we are mostly talking about... Um, the conquest format, right? So people bring a deck and if they win, it's out. So if Patron Warrior was really that powerful, um, people would usually like win with Patron Warrior and then it's out and then they won. So it should even increase the, um, the amount of games being won uh, as opposed to like the old format, which was the last two you're standing. So you would win with Patron Warrior, then your opponent would counterpick you and then you would lose, most likely. Um, so this would far more like explain a 50% win rate than the Conquest format. And we can see the da database is quite high. We have almost 1,000 Patron Moria games tracked. So that's quite like accurate. But the thing why we actually like think about this the whole time is because of situations like this um, happened in, I think, the uh, NA qualifiers for BlizzCon, um, where we have the um, situation of Jab playing against Fibonacci. Fibonacci is playing Control Warriors at uh, 47 health, um, so even more than you can max, like, with other classes have. Uh, and the board is empty. Um, but as you can see with the big hand size of um, jabs, he has also a lot of discounted cards like Frothing Berserkers too, and an Unstable Ghoul, and a Patron, and the Coin, and Whirlwinds, and he has a Death Spite with one charge, so there are a lot of cards involved, and you can imagine how the situation ends. It ends with Fibonacci's face exploding because of 32 damage, Frothing Berserkers, Plus a few patrons, plus a few whirlwind effects, etc., etc. Um, so that's why it is so stuck in our hand. Like this is unfun, right? I, I put myself to forty-seven health. I cleared the board a lot, and I still lost. That's that's frustrating. And Blizzard said they didn't want it to be frustrating, but like oh, uh, again, the pure existence of such a combo isn't a reason to nerf it. Because we already have like different combos that we don't see that often. Like let's say we play a Sorcerer's Apprentice or even two, then we echo them and we have more or we use duplicate with them so that we can put up a lot of Sorcerer's Apprentices and then we play the Archmage Antonidas and suddenly we have a bunch of fireballs um, with four Sorcerer's Apprentices, which means we have infinite fireballs, literally infinite fireballs that we can play and play and play until our turn timer stops. So this is a really infinite um, combo that, especially if you can get off like uh, an Emperor discount on your hand or something. 
So if we look at the first screenshot again here, then Jab's hand was full of stuff and most of them was discounted. So it actually needed a lot of setup, like the one charge of the Death Spite, um, two Grim Patrons, dis uh, two Frothing Berserkers discounted, the Warstone Commander discounted, um, the Grim Patron discounted, the Whirlwind discounted, <laughs> the Inner Age. So there were like a lot of cards involved and it seems like it's kind of similar to the combo I just um, came up with, right? So of course we have to see it in context again. And Grim Patron is a deck that, at least in the tournament meta, is still around quite a lot. But as we've seen, it's not that suppressing overall. Um, which is also like not just my anecdotal example with my Priestrin, but also we see a lot of different decks getting to rank 1 Legend recently. So Colanto made it with Druid um, this season, where he didn't even tag against Patrons with like um, a weapon destruction effect. Like, I haven't seen many druids around without Harrison Jones, or at least an ooze, recently. But his deck did it without, so he didn't even have to tack against Grim Patron to get there. Um, Xixxo got rank 1 legend with Patron Warrior. I've seen Thais made it with uh, Handlock, which of course has a good matchup against Patron Warrior, usually. Uh, Zenf Class made it with um, Control Priest, which usually is considered to have a bad matchup against Patrons. Uh, so there are a lot of varieties of decks and the meta seems quite healthy because people can get to legend or even to rank one legend with uh, a lot of different decks these days. Uh, Jab is also like making top five sometimes with uh, midrange hunter. So as I said, there are a lot of different archetypes and the meta seems quite healthy. Uh, I've seen Crypt talking about the whole meta and he said his opinion was that Grim Patron actually is good for the meta because otherwise um, decks like, um, or aggro decks in general, but also like uh, Secret Paladin and such would climb a lot in popularity because like playing many small minions gets punished by patrons, right? Because you can Warsong command a patron uh, to get a full board and to clear your opponent's board. You can use your whirlwind effects to kill all the small stuff. So um, patron wars usually line up well against uh, board flooding with just small guys. So that patron warrior basically keeps these decks in check without being too oppressive and crushing the meta. And also, even if this was the case, if patron warrior was around like by a big amount right now, as it was in the past when it first became popular, and Zenf Glass made rank 1 with it. Um, I actually tagged my decks very well against Grim Patron Warrior. I played my Druid from like rank 1500 or something to the top 50 just by adding an Ooze and a Harrison Jones. So it's not impossible to tag against them. And as we've seen, Grim Patron Warriors in general don't really have this high amount of winward anyways. So I can understand the hesitation of blizzards to nerf it because however you will nerf it it will weaken the deck obviously because it's a nerf which also means that um the deck becomes weaker than it is already i mean it's still a str it's a strong deck but it's not the overpowered uh tier zero uh beats everything deck as i've pointed out earlier so what actually could we do to nerf this? And I don't have a really good idea because what we want to nerf is this situation we, we see here, right? We want to like, don't get frustrated by losing because we have an empty board, we have a full board, we have big taunts, but we lose to two char charging frothing berserkers that just deal like 60 damage to our face. Um, so let's have a look at, um, the cards that are involved here, which is basically Warsong Commander, uh, of course Grim Patron, Frothing Berserker. So these three cards are basically like the core of frustration. And if we look at this, we could make, let's say, Warsong Commander an aura effect. So that only things that stay below uh, for attack still have charge which would obviously punish the deck by a lot. You would lose your endgame finisher, you would lose a Grim Patron charging after a uh, an Inner Age, 
So this doesn't really seem that valuable. Uh, you could nerf the Frothing Berserker, for example, to be a 2-3. Because a 2-3 can at maximum get Whirlwind it twice before it dies. So this would be something that would keep the damage of a Frothing Berserker in check as long as um, your opponent doesn't have like a full board of two twos and then you play exactly the, the three cards here and then the Whirlwind and then uh, and charge all the patrons into the, the small guys, things like that. To still have like a big finisher but not this big or not this infinite. However, this would be a pretty big nerf if you don't want to play it as a finisher but in the mid or late game just to get a board presence, to get a 4-4 let's say. Because we already know how bad a 2-3 uh, is on the board as a 3-drop. Like, we have... Um, um, we have the Tauron Warrior, for example, which also has Taunt and an Enrage effect, or the Wind Fury guy, the 2-3 Wind Fury. So we know that 2-3 in stats for a 3-drop is really, really bad. And I'm not sure if it would not um, punish the deck too hard. But that's one of the more realistic options. We have, a of course, two other contenders that we could look to um, for, which are... Uh, actually, we can leave the mump here. So, which are Th Emperor Thorsen and Battle Rage. So, um, as for the Leroy in Miracle Rogue and Alakir in Shaman thing, um, the card draw is what makes a deck or a combo deck um, consistent, right? So Battle Rage is one big part of the whole drawing and cycling thing of, of um, Warriors. So you could, of, co of course, do something like limit the Battle Rage to minions only, which would make it harder. Or, uh, of course, you could also limit the damage that the Frothing does to, like, enemy minions, friendly minions, something like this. But I'm still not sure if this wouldn't be too hard to, like, kick it out of the of the top league and just make it a gimmick deck that most people thought a Grim Patron Warrior would be in the first place. Um, a change that I would actually maybe like to see is the Emperor Thorson um, effect going off at the start of your turn. This is something that when this card got announced and revealed before the Blackrock Mountain came out, I thought like, wow, this effect is so strong and you can't... As an opponent, you can't really do anything against it, because even if you kill it on your turn, when it got dropped on the board, you will lose, um, or not, you won't, you won't lose, but uh, the effect already went off, right? Um, so your opponent can do, you'll do a 7 mana um, combo if it's a druid, or it can get a hand like we've seen from Jab, with um, a lot of discounted cards here, which is like Frothing Berserker, Whirlwind, Warzone Commander, Execute. So there are like eight discounted cards in his hand um, that are obviously like super powerful and you couldn't even do something against this. So if we say like Emperor Thorsen goes off at the start of your turn, you, you give your opponent time to react and or even just to silence it. In which case, if the Emperor don't go off, you have a very limited amount of actions, right? So if you play Warsong Double Frothing, you only have one mana left, for example. So you could do like an Inner Age and a Whirlwind and maybe a Death Spite Whirlwind. So that's like the maximum of things you can get out. Um, if you deal with a Thorazen without, uh, without his effect going off or... yeah. So I think this is like a thing we could look into because the Emperor Thorsen is basically what enables the whole deck. Um, or enables these really insane combos as opposed to like maybe combos that are in check. However, I, um, as I've pointed out, I think the nerf that if there should be a nerf, then it should be a nerf that doesn't destroy the deck in total. Because many people enjoy like the playstyle of the deck. Um, many pe or others are um, 
thinking that the meta would be worse without it. And um, the whole reason why we will nerf it is the frustration, uh, as I've pointed out earlier. Not because the deck is uh, like this overpowered in general. Um, there are a lot of things that are somewhat frustrating in Hearthstone. I personally don't like to play against Freeze Mage, for example, because all they do is like basically the same, right? They, they stall you. Um, it doesn't matter whether or not you play minions. And um, then even if you can kill them, they aren't dead because they have their ice block. And then you just die to a barrage of spells that can even do like also 30 damage if there was an Emperor Thorson discount. And then they play like um, Blood Mage, Thalnos, um, Fireball, Fireball, Frostball, Frostbolt, Ice Lands, Ice Lands, something like this. Um, so there are combos that are like basically the same, but not around that much, not that present, because Freeze Mage has other problems against, for example, Druids or Warriors because of the armor. But. Um, in general, I think there are a lot of things we would like would have to look into if we um, go back to the beginning and take this as like the baseline that we don't want people to die in interactively um, with an OTK combo of 20 or more damage. But uh, if we want to destroy all of this, we basically have to get rid of the whole idea of combo decks, which some people enjoy or which are different decks to play with and against so it makes the whole meta more diverse and I like it being this way basically even though I don't really like to play against all of these kinds of decks but um, I think we have to accept them as a part of the meta and we don't have to scream at Blizzard like do something do something do something because you said something like this here but it's of course more complex and um, we know from Blizzard they don't really nerf things. They wait a lot of time and they think about it quite a lot. And even this change was like basically too late <laughs> because it came out um, when Miracle was on the decline a little bit already. And it was necessary like two months earlier than it actually came. But we know that they take a lot of time, that they like to consider things, that they like to observe things, and that they um, are not very fast with these things. So I can understand that in this case, they are taking even more time because it's way harder to come up with an actual solution to the problem that people don't enjoy losing by this big combo. But also that the deck from the numbers is pretty much balanced. It's a strong deck, but it's still in check, it's still balanced, and it's able to tech against. Um, so I think that if we want to nerf it, if we want to nerf the frustration, uh, the nerf has to be rather small, and um, as for my personal taste, I would really like to, or I would like to see the Emperor effect nerfed, because this is what enables the deck in the first place and it's not something you can deal with like you can't say I save my fireball because I want to kill an Emperor Thorson because the event went off anyways right so um, when I first saw the card my instinct was it should be at the start of the turn and I'm not sure if this should be the case from a balance perspective but I would Personally, I think I would like it more to be this way because it would also like limit the frustration from freeze mages, from uh, patron warriors, from maybe infinite damage, um, Sorcerer's Apprentice, Fireball, and Tinnitus combos um, in the first place. Because if you set up your board or your resources the right way, you would actually like not lose. And um, of course I'm aware that most of the wins, or some of the wins, Grim Patron Warrior pulls off is exactly because of Emperor. Because you coin out Emperor turn 5, um, you don't care about your opponent, Bas let's say it's Zoo. So they flooded the board, you say, okay, I can survive this turn, 
by just coining out Emperor, and then the next turn you have a discounted Warstone Commander and a discounted Grim Patron, even though they killed your Thorsten right away, and then you can start like clearing their board, all the 2-3s, all the 1-1s, one all the 1-2s. You can start killing all of this, um, and get out a bunch of patrons and clearing the board, at the, and then you win. So that's one win condition off the deck. Um, that would, of course, just go away because you can't play Emperor Thorazin if you're behind anymore. So this would be a huge nerve, and I'm even not sure if this um, wouldn't make it wouldn't destroy the deck already. Even though it's like my first instinct of w where we should like focus. Of course, you could say limit Bell Rage to um, friendly minions. Limit Frothing Berserker to 3 health, limit is limited to friendly minions, uh, or its effect to friendly minions or to enemy minions. There are a lot of things you could think about, and of course, you have to think about the whole concept of Warstone Commander. If you like, like the ability of someone charging for a lot of damage during one turn, which isn't interactive at all, but of course, if you do uh, whatever nerf to Warstone Commander, you would of uh, you would like take away the whole base the Grim Patron Warriors build on. And whether that's a good or a bad thing is probably up to anyone's opinion. But as for now, I don't think that the numbers that we see and that Blizzard gathers for sure um, are pointing towards it right now. Um, so to make it a clear cut I don't think that the deck by itself should be nerfed for like analytical reasons um, it of course creates a lot of um, frustrating moments based on its nature so do other decks that um, are also around here and then in the meta so I don't think that we should nerf it hard but if we don't know if it's hard then we will still have the frustrating moments so uh, I'd rather cope with it um, there are options and ways to deal with it even more after TGT because early pressure just yeah it's early pressure and um, Grim Patron still has to cycle and to get all the combo pieces together and such um, but if we wanted to nerf it like if we agreed that it should be nerfed I would probably look on Emperor Thorsen as um, one of the first targets we could get for a nerf. That said, I would be uh, interested in your opinions. Like, do you think it should be nerfed? If so, which card should it be? Which range of cards should it be? Which me mechanic maybe should it be? And um, maybe I lost a few options or I didn't think about them. So leave me your opinion in the comments. And you can also come up with um, more discussion topics you would like to see addressed in the future. Um, well, thanks for watching until here. Give me a like if you liked it. Uh, don't if you didn't like it. <laughs> and I hope we'll see you around next time. Bye-bye.